This is a video where I explain my grading system for all the AP courses I teach. For some reason, when I spell it out in writing on the syllabus, it always comes across as incomprehensible, even to most adults. So I thought I'd try to solve this problem once and for all by making a video and doing some examples and stuff. Here's the short version, see if you can follow. The only things that get grades are tests and quizzes. No homework, no participation, no projects. It's just tests and quizzes. Each quarter will have at least three tests and some number of pop quizzes. The quiz average carries the weight of a test grade. The least of these grades is dropped and the remaining grades are averaged. Finally, you take half of that number and add 50, usually referred to as the curve. That's your grade for the quarter. There are a couple of more comments I have to make, but that's pretty much it. I don't know, it all seems pretty simple to me, but let's go through a couple examples anyway. Say we have three tests and your grades are 80, 50, and 72. Let's also say that we have four quizzes, each out of about 15 points, with the points you earn on each quiz as shown. Your quiz average is computed in the usual way of earned points divided by possible points. In this case, you earned a total of 41 out of 61 points, giving you a 66 for your quiz average. These are your raw grades for the quarter. Then you do just like I said, you drop the lowest one and average the rest. This number is called your raw average, or something. This is the number that you take half and add 50 to, giving your final grade, in this case of 86. And that's pretty much it. The only catch is that the last test of the quarter cannot be dropped. This is to keep pressure on students from trying to coast at the end of the quarter and blowing off the last test. If it does happen that the last test is the lowest of your grades, then you don't get a drop and something different happens. Your two lowest grades are averaged, and that average carries the weight of a regular test. So this is how it could go. Say you take the first two tests and get an 80 and a 72, and your quiz average comes out to be a 66 again. Then it's time to take the last test and you get a 50. Oh no! The 50 in your next lowest grade, the 66, combine for an average of 58. Then that number and the two other test grades are averaged for the raw grade, and then you take half and add 50 and end up with 85. So it's not the end of the world anyways. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but this is a pretty student-friendly grading system. These grades are pretty crappy by most students' standards, yet in the end, they produce a result that most students are usually pretty happy with. This is why I say you should be happy with your performance if your test grades are about 70. Because if your grades are all 70, or if they average out to 70 after the drop, this curves you up to an 85 for your final grade, and it's not too bad. Some critical people might say that this is no more than grade inflation just designed to make me look good as an instructor, but I dispute this. It's supposed to be a hard course that's graded easily, and the take half and add 50 rule accomplishes this exactly. It might be hard to get an A, but it's also pretty hard to fail, though on occasion students do fail, and some people fail more than others. But then somebody might say, oh, you're making the class more difficult than it needs to be. I dispute this too, because historically there's been a very strong correlation between the grade a student earns in the class and the grade she ends up getting on the AP exam. Students who get A's usually get a 5 on the exam, students who get B's usually get a 4, students who get C's usually get a 3, or they choose not to take it. This has been the case since I started teaching the course in 2005 or so. Okay, so that's the deal with how quarter grades are calculated. I encourage students to keep an updated record of their test scores throughout the marking period so there are no surprises come report card time. And if you ask me how to do it, I'm just going to refer you back to this video anyway. I wish you the best of luck in AP. If you like math, it should be a lot of fun.